Hey guys, so like today's video is more of a continuation on the Eternal War. Um, if you guys don't know what the setting is, essentially it's some guy who's playing Civilization 2 forever. It's been in a constant state of war for like 2,000 years. It's a really cool setting and there's some stories and of course it's very old. If you guys want to actually go ahead, you can play this old save. Um, links to it down below. See if you can fix the Eternal War. Um, some guy actually has managed to fix the Eternal yeah. War and it's actually quite a nice ending. But go watch the first video. Uh, yeah, definitely watch that if, yeah. you, if you haven't seen it yet. Links will be down below for that. Um, but here, like, let's get into this. We've got two different stories for you. I think they're worth doing. Three Stories, One War. Posted by User Deleted. Following orders. The sky was grey and the floor was covered in the usual ash. It was hard to make out what month it was. The wind was cold and dressed hardly could stand it. He'd much rather be inside of his hab unit but at least he was luckier than the men on their knees before him. American spies, his officer told him. In reality, they were workers. Workers caught stealing. He peered at the men through his gas mask. Reaching into his heavy duster, he took a deep breath and lit a flare, throwing it in the centre of the group. There wasn't a word said between the two parties. He knew what he was told to do, and they knew what was bound to happen. He loaded a clip into his rifle and took a deep breath resting the shock of the old gun against his shoulder. Translation from Irish to English. Please just tell me where you got it, he asked, a quiet pleading tone in his voice. Silence. He let out a sharp exhale, his mask turning it into a low howl. A comrade approached from his left. There's no point in talking to them, just do it. His teammate offered a sharp stare. Green eyes focused through faded gas mask lens. Dress gave a hesitant nod. Archaeology. A group of civil workers marched down a dusty, abandoned city street. It was one of those bright, energetic days where the sun almost came through the clouds and the wind wasn't as bitter. Sure, the buildings were old and mostly rubble, bombed nearly 30 times in the past millennium, but fate was kind to the bold. One of the workers wandered into an old, roofless building with a collapsed wall. A mummified skeleton sat under a collapsed pillar. Lucky. It looks like this place was ignored or missed by other scavenge raids. Kadrine knelt down and went through the rags that once made up the man's clothing. A watch. A pocket watch. The man's eyes lit up with shock. Gold with brass etchings. To my beloved James. He read with some difficulty. He slowly stood up, cackling with glee. He tried his best to remember, but the only thing even remotely as shiny as this was one of the buildings he saw in passing in Cardiff as a child. Find something? A colleague yelled out, alerted by the noise. The scavenger cleared his throat and stuffed the watch into his jacket. No, nothing but bones. He turned. There was a man at the doorway, wearing a tight black jacket and holding a knife. The patches on his jacket sleeve signified an American military unit. The scavenger didn't have time to scream, stabbed in the chest and thrown to the ground only to be stabbed multiple times in a follow-through. The other Americans wandered past in silence. The force had to move in under the brief bite of good weather. Tanks were on the way, blazing through bones strewn remnants of a city, lost to time and the war. It was six days to Cardiff, if they were lucky. Fun facts for the common man. 3992 edition. Edited by the Ministry of Public Information and Education. We have always been at war with the Viking land. We are proud allies with the Viking land. Viking land defeat is inevitable. Viking land will help us rebuild the world. What should you do if you meet a Viking? Stab him. Love your Nordic brother for he cares for the common man. Vikings attack from behind as to better stab Celts in the back. Did you know that Viking land is 90% swampland? That's almost entirely swampland. Serves them right. Americans hoard food rations and block shipments to hospitals. Americans have over 60 racist epithets for Celts. Americans' weapons are made by the blind and the crazed. Americans still hold true to silly belief systems. Did you know the Revolution War is over a thousand years old? That's over 10 one hundreds. 100 equals 10 tens. 10 is 10 ones. One is what comes after zero. Can you read? Please apply at your local party office for possible officer employment in the People's Defence Force. All officers receive the Supreme Commander's favour.
Hey guys, so sorry to interrupt the video, but I just want to tell you to go ahead and check us out on Spotify. You can find all of our new videos normally a day early on Spotify, and it's a great way to help us out. It just makes sense at this point expanding outside of YouTube since it's a bit of a slowly sinking ship. Yeah, it yeah. is. Also, you should check us out on Discord, Instagram, Twitter, and join the Facebook group, link below. It really helps us out a lot being able to expand outside of YouTube. So go ahead and join us on whatever social media platform you use. However, let's get back into the video. Eternal War, 200 years on. Posted by user Inigos. For your homework, write an essay on 200 years of the new era. The new era began in 3991 AD, 200 years ago. Life was very different back then. Most of the world was radioactive swamps and we had been at war with America and the Vikings for thousands of years. Comrade Lycoris had been leading us forever, and we were communists. It all changed when the Druid took over, and instead of communism, we switched to a much better type of government called fundamentalism. Fundamentalism is better than everything, except democracy, which is what we've got now. The Druid explained that we would have a few decades of sacrifice and hardship, but after that, everything would be much better. He then launched an all-out assault on the Vikings. Every family has stories of those days. My great-great-grandmother sneaked into Roskilde and managed to sabotage a nuclear missile just before it was launched at our troops. My friend Deirdre's great-great-grandfather spent years with his tank battalion outside Geyser, fighting off every attack that was launched against him. And by his sacrifice, one time for our spies to capture the United Nations in Jarlshoft. Finally, the end came in 4012 AD, 21 years of hard fighting later. Our harzers took Viking capital of Pisa. Without a capital, the Vikings were disheartened, and our spies were able to convince their remaining cities to join our side. Sydney was the last Viking city, and they come over to us peacefully, as soon as it was explained to them how superior the Celt's way of life is. For the first time in millennia, we were at peace. The Viking city had many luxuries. Granaries, libraries, universities, police stations, cathedrals. That we sold off to help pay the pensions of our war veterans. I wonder what they were like. We don't have buildings like that nowadays. There's no point, since the Druid tells us that there's nothing new to learn. There were only four years of peace before fighting with the Americans began again in 4016 AD. We had sent an emissary to the Americans, requesting reparations for the centuries of war they had waged against us. The Americans presented us with a gift of a mere 75 gold. This insulting offer was effectively a declaration of war. Fortunately, in the brief years of peace, we had been able to build a force of howitzers, bombers and spies which were conveniently sighted near the American cities. When the treacherous Americans effectively stabbed us in the back, we were ready to retaliate. We took Azumo, Athens, and wounded knee quickly, but we knew that the main fight would be on the American mainland. Our forces were airlifted across to the mainland, and we sent transports full of howitzers across the new Viking land. We also sent our battleships to attack the Sioux, but due to a navigation error, they went in the wrong direction for several years. In 4020, we captured San Francisco, which was then the capital of America. It had moved from Washington a few years before. In 4021, the Americans nuked San Francisco, destroying their own people. This shows how untrustworthy the Americans are. We call our soldiers who died that day the San Francisco Martyrs. They were the last people to be killed by nuclear weapons. We could have retaliated with our own nukes but that would have been wrong. In 4022, our battleships finally reached the Sioux cities of Point of Rocks and Raging Brook, and supported by howitzers from Dead Buffalo. They defeated the Sioux. Simultaneously, our forces landed at Atlanta to take out the remaining American cities. The Sioux and the Americans begged us for peace, and we granted it. The war was over. The Druids stepped down from power in 4024 AD and a new age of freedom, peace and democracy began. Naturally, everyone voted for the Druids party, and they've remained in power ever since. It took almost 40 years to clean up all of the radiation from the nukes, 
but we finally did it in 4061 AD. And since then, our engineers have been converting the swamps to farmland and planting trees. There used to be problems with something called global warming, but that's gone away since the pollution was cleared up. The Americans and Sioux are still around, of course. The Sioux have a city called Militos in the middle of the swamp, and the Americans are on a little swampy island in a tiny city called Crete. I went there on a school trip to look at them, once. I don't know why they went to live in such a nasty place. Keltania is much nicer. There were less than 16 million people in Keltania at the beginning of the new era, and there are 160 million of us now. Everyone's much happier too. We celebrate We Love the Druid Day every year. I made a paper mache model of the Druid last year, and it won a prize. The Celts are the best civilization ever. Too long didn't read. Vikings beaten after 21 years. Americans and Sioux beaten after 31 years. Pollution cleaned up after 70 years. After 200 years, 160 million people in Keltania and everyone happy. So yeah, both of these stories were actually written like eight years ago now. Yeah. Um, this here, as you know, the last one was just a guy doing a light up on how he managed to fix the eternal war by moving over instead of moving from communism, going over to fundamentalism. It kind of worked because they would never be able to, you just can't surrender whenever yeah. you're communists. Um, it's more working with game mechanics and stuff like that. But I kind of like this one because it ended on like you know kind of a nice note that someone was able to fix such a horrible and messed up setting. You know, um, it does have a lot of forty k vibes, but uh, very list, grim dark. Very grim dark. But to me, it's more nineteen eighty four. Yeah. It's really cool though. I I really enjoy this, and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. It, it was worth doing. There is, if you really enjoy it, there is more stories, so we, we can do another thread on. Yeah, it. Yeah, we might do another it. Another thread, another, another video. Yeah, um, there is actually quite a few stories, so we'll play well. Just let us know what you think, and uh, if you've ever actually played the Eternal War, um, let us know how you got on. If you, yeah, if you managed to fix, fix the it. mess, <laughs> I would definitely like to hear your story on it but like as always guys hope you enjoyed this one check out all the links down below and we'll see you in the next video bye all those moments lost in time